Barry Smith here again, uh, and we've come to the point to where we will actually start talking about how to subnet and start walking you through uh, the whole subnetting procedure. Uh, first and foremost, there's a couple things that I really want to make sure that you understand. First, it is, it's highly unlikely that you're going to be a subnetting master uh, after viewing this video. Uh, so if you're not completely sure or if this doesn't, you know, if you if you think to yourself, I, I don't completely get it, that's actually perfectly fine and very much normal at this point. You know, you've probably never subnetted before in your life, therefore it takes a little bit. Um, before we actually get into what's here on this board and, and I explain everything to you, a couple things that I, a couple more things I want to point out. One, hopefully you've watched the other videos that shows the IP addressing, it shows the classes, how to convert binary numbers. All those things actually lead up to this. Another thing, inside of the doc sharing in the classroom right now should be a uh, Excel spreadsheet that has all of this information here on it on the spreadsheet that you can get and print out and kind of uh, use it to follow along. So if you want to pause this video and go back to the class and uh, uh, pull up that um, Excel spreadsheet and doc sharing, um, it should simply be called subnetting information. Uh, inside of, of the uh, doc sharing in the class. That would be good too. Um, uh, lastly, this video is going to be a little bit longer. I try to keep all the videos to about 10 minutes or less, but this video is going to be a little bit longer because this just requires a little bit more time to uh, explain this, but it should be time well spent because subnetting is an extremely important part of any type of network administration. And for those of you in the Cisco class, the certification test, the first Cisco certification test, is probably about 60% subnetting. So the more you know this, the better it's going to be for you in the real world as well as certification tests. So enough of that, let's get to it and let me try to explain to you what I have on the board. If you've seen earlier videos or if you saw the earlier video where I showed you how to convert binary to decimal and decimal to binary, then you recognize here at the bottom we have what we call our binary calculator. It is this little chart here at the bottom that will help you convert binary numbers to decimal numbers and vice versa. Wonderful little tool to have. I use this all the time even when I take certification tests still I go in and write this thing down if I know there's going to be IP addressing and subnetting on the test. Now here behind me on the left hand side of the board what I have essentially done if you look at it is I took the binary calculator and I just kind of stood it up because the same numbers that you see down here are actually here. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, exactly like it is over here. The difference is, is that if you look uh, to the very far left, we have a 2 to the power of number. So we have 2 to the power of 0, 2 to 1, 2 to 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 to the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. Now, this is going to play a very important part in our subnetting when we get here to step five, which we'll get to in just a little bit. But when we say two to the nth, the two to the n, nth, the n is one of these two to the power of numbers. And it'll make more sense to you in just a little bit. So, again, so far all these videos hopefully have made things a little bit easier. And you see that this is not very difficult. And I'm here to tell you, I know that it's easy for me to say this, but this is not very difficult either. Um, so let me show you uh, uh, how to subnet. I have broken subnetting down into what I call the six rules of subnetting or six steps of subnetting and you see these over here. Steps one through four, if you've seen the other videos that I've showed you, step one through four is easy. Uh, you can do it in your head. Uh, in fact, it shouldn't take you very long to do it in your head anyway. Um, what I do beg of you though is don't skip a step. Even when you get really good at this, go through all the steps in your mind. You don't have to write them down maybe, but just go through it in your mind, step one, step two, step three, because it just gets you in a really good rhythm. Uh, I cannot tell you how many students I've seen in the past where they would uh, they get really confident, which is great, but they would get really confident, they would skip a step, and then before you know it, you know, they get wrong answers because they kind of confuse themselves. Don't do that, you know, stick with it. Now, when you're dealing with subnetting, there are two basic types of subnetting. The two basic types of subnetting are what I call the easy way, which is this here, 
and the hard way, which is this here. Now, the hard way, I need to say the hard way, forgive me for doing the, the quotes like that, but the hard way is not very hard. In essence, what it means is this. If you have to sub, uh, subnet doing the quote unquote hard way, that means you need to go through all six steps over here. To subnet the easy way, whenever you see a, a subnetting problem that looks like this, that has a slash and a number at the end, you really kind of be thinking, yes, you know, that's a, that's a win, because with the easy way, the only thing you have to do is you just literally skip to step six, because step one through five has been done for you. Uh, and again, I'll explain more about that here in just a little bit. So the hard way, all six steps, the easy way, this way up here, you only have to go to step number six, which is obviously easier one step than all six. So let's look at these steps quickly, and then I'll kind of walk you through a couple of examples of subnetting, uh, and hopefully uh, it won't be, um, your head won't spin too much, and hopefully you'll actually think, hey, that wasn't quite as hard as I thought, because it's really not that difficult. So if you look at our rules here, we start with rule number one. It says ID the class. ID the class is meaning ID, it's either an A, B, or C. That's it. Step one is done. Step two is you want to identify the network and node IDs. Remember in a previous video I told you that depending upon what class you have, certain octets represent the network ID and then other octets represent the node or host ID. And that's it. Step two is done. Once you identify those, you're done. Step three is apply the default subnet mask. Well, the default subnet mask uh, for A, B, or C is wherever you see the network ID uh, of the IP address, if it's a class A, remember the network ID is the first octet. Well, a default subnet mask is you want to put a 255 um, wherever the network ID is. So class A, the subnet mask would be 255.0.0.0. For class B, remember class B, the first two octets was your network ID, so the subnet mask would be 255.255.0.0. And for class C, the first three octets were your um, network ID, so that would be 255.255.255.0. So you're essentially applying the default subnet mask for whatever class it is that you identified in class in step number one. Next, step number four is you want to convert the subnet mask to binary, and this is where your binary calculator will come into play a little bit. Uh, I say a little bit because converting a default subnet mask is very easy. If you see a 255 in a subnet mask, then that 255 equates to eight ones in your octet. So if you see 255, it's eight ones, eight ones, uh, eight bits, eight ones. If you see a zero in the subnet mask, then it's eight zeros, it's that simple. So with a standard subnet mask, um, or a default subnet mask, I should say, it's either going to be eight ones or eight zeros, and that's it. So steps one through four is really, again, you know, pretty basic IP stuff, things you should have already read in your book, uh, and hopefully things you already know. Step five and step six are the only two steps where you actually have to get into, I guess you would say, math. Um, and even these two steps are not very difficult, believe it or not. I know, again, it's easy for me to say. Um, so step five says use two to the nth minus two. You, I should say use the formula two to the nth minus two to determine the custom subnet mask. Now, what does this mean? Now, if you remember in one of the other videos I showed you, I used the example of a pizza uh, as, as like a network. You have one whole pizza or one whole network and what you're trying to do with subnetting is we want to take that one whole network and we want to break it into smaller pieces. And those pieces are going to be easier for us to manage and control. Well, we just have to figure out how do we break that up. And the custom subnet mask in this formula that we're going to use is going to tell us the numbers that we have to put in to mathematically break it up into smaller pieces. That's all there really is to it. Um, so what we have to do is we have to change the subnet mask from something other than default to a custom subnet mask that will mathematically give us those pieces or those smaller subnets that we're looking for. Uh, and we'll walk through a couple of examples and we'll kind of show you. Uh, so that's step five. Step six is once you determine the custom subnet, or once you have the custom subnet mask, you want to determine something called the LSB 
and LSB stands for least significant bit. And the least significant bit will be the bit in the octet that you're changing, and again, you'll see it here in just a minute, it's the bit in the octet that you're changing, uh, the smallest bit in that octet that still has value. In other words, the smallest bit that has a one in it. Um, and that's what's called your least significant bit. And believe it or not, the least significant bit is the key to your subnetting um, as far as like determining your, your range and where your subnets are gonna begin and end. Uh, once you get that least significant bit, it's, it's, everything else just will fall into place, uh, believe it or not. So these are your six steps. And again, I don't expect you, you, right now you may be thinking to yourself, I don't understand a word you just said and that's fine. It, it is, you're just learning, so don't, don't freak out yet. Um, it, it, it's, it's very common. Once you walk through a couple of these, once you see a couple of these, um, it usually is a lot easier for you to comprehend and other, understand, and, and that's my hope. So let me go back over here to the easy way and the hard way like we talked about. And let me explain to you why this is called the easy way, or why that's what I call it, that's not what anybody else calls it. Um, the slash and a number here at the end is often referred to as CIDR notation, C-I-D-R, CIDR, uh, CIDR notation. And what makes this so easy is that they have already done steps one through five for you. This, in essence, believe it or not, that number right there is your custom subnet mask. And what this number represents in this after the slash, this number represents how many ones, binary ones, you're going to have in your subnet mask. Now there's a rule, uh, a TCP IP rule about subnet masks that you must adhere to. And that rule is a very simple rule, but it states that your subnet mask will start with binary ones, and those binary ones must be continuous until they stop. So in other words, you're going to start with binary ones, there will be all binary ones until you stop, and from that point on there must be the rest zeros. And if you will recall from the other videos and from also your reading and your studying, you have 32 total bits that you're going to be dealing with. So what this number here tells us is that the first 20 of those bits are going to be binary ones, which means that the last 12, in this case, will be zeros. So this is giving us our custom subnet mask. The only thing we would have to then figure out at this point is, what's the least significant bit? And once we figure out the least significant bit, we have pretty much everything we need for, um, uh, to give us our ranges and to tell us how many subnets, where the subnets begin, where they end, and all that other kind of good stuff. Now on the quote unquote hard way to do it, which is this way here, this one you start off with nothing in essence. Uh, all we have is a what I call a starting point. And where did I get this starting point? Where did this IP come from? Well, I made it up. Uh, you're the network administrator at your company. You will be able to make up a starting point and I'm going to use this as almost like a base or a baseline to then build my sub networks off of. So the 172.16.0.0 that you see here, that's just me making it up, and, and it, it's that simple, and that's what network administrators do. They, they get a starting point and they go from there. Now if you look right above it, it says that we need 11 networks needed. And what that means is that means that I need to create 11 sub networks. So this particular method, the quote unquote hard way, I would need to go through all six steps to determine what the numbers and, and, and where I'm going to be at. And again, if this is starting to be confusing to you, please don't freak out. Uh, I totally understand. Uh, it's not quite as bad as you think. So let's go through this. Let's, let's walk through this one right here, the, the hard way, because if you can do the hard way, you can do the easy way really easy. So it says here that we, this is our starting point and we need 11 networks. So if we use our subnetting rules and we go through it, let's see if we can make this thing work. So, 172.16.0.0, what class is that? What class IP address is this? Hopefully you are saying B, because this is a class B IP address. Remember, the first octet is the word, the, the octet you determine your class, and this octet is between 128 and 191. So this is a class B. So step one is done. Not very hard, is it? So step one is class B, in this case. Step two, identify the network and node IDs. 
Well, if you remember on a class B IP address, the first two octets represent the network and the last two octets represent the node. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line right here in between them and just separate them just like that. It's that simple. Step two is done. Step three says apply the default subnet mask. Well, I told you just a little bit ago, for a class B IP address, your default subnet mask will be 255.255.0.0. Wherever you see, wherever the network ID is, the, the subnet mask or the number below it will always be 255, you know, for a standard class A, B, or C. Um, and you can, we'll explain more about that later on in other videos. So, apply the default subnet mask is step three. Step four says to convert the subnet mask to binary. So in other words, we have to take this number and we have to convert it to binary. Well, again, a default subnet mask is a very simple conversion because wherever you see 255, that's going to equate to eight ones in our binary calculator because all of these numbers added up together would give you 255. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dot, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dot, and then zeros would be eight zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dot, one, two, three, four.